Shed hackers, I'm just going to lift the guard temporarily just so you can see the cut, but normally the guard will be down. Okay? <laughs> okay, that's the other half. Now the sides, we've cut one out there, 20 millimeter hole. It's 280 total height, total width 190 millimeters, and that's one side. And we've done the other there, and you can see shed hackers. And um, you can see it's been cut very accurate, accurately with the um, uh, power fret saw. And we're going to drill that now with the uh, mini pillar drill. Right, goggles on. This is side number what two, and this is the pillar drill. Guard down. Goggles on. Hold your work firmly to one side, one person at a time, and green for all. Find the middle. There we go. And woo, and up. That's it. Very carefully go through the base. Don't go push. Don't push too hard. Go in for about three bits. Wipe away the dirt. And that's a lovely job. Okay, there's our design. I'm going to draw that out much better, Jake, actually, for our viewers. But um, these, they're the two bits together. They have to be symmetrical. That means that they have to be the same. And we're going to use a rasp, rough file there, to try and get that curve even better. And then a fine, finer half uh, round shape to, to finish it off. Okay, and the way to do that, Jake, if you just move around this side, is to put your hand there, and this has to be held completely horizontally. I say completely, just absolutely perfectly. Just like that. And if you rush this part, if you rush this part of the job, the whole thing starts looking pretty shoddy. So you're not going to do that. Take easy shed hackers. If it takes you an hour to do the whole two sides, it's probably an hour well spent. When you get them all the same. Should be nice and sharp, these rasps. These are about five to five to ten pounds each. There's a finer one there. This is a, a woodworker's file. Five to ten pounds max. Use that curved edge to your advantage. Use the flat side now. You take your time, guys. Get that right. Great the sides all marked out to the same exactly the same show them Jake I think we could chisel that out very carefully from both sides but I think actually for viewers to help them mark out the centers by doing a diagonal on each all four of them I'll probably make a template if I did this again and then we're going to drill that I think probably best all the way through with a sacrificial piece of wood underneath um, and then I think that's going to help all uh, an awful lot and then we can just chisel the corners to make sure the corners are nice and neat once we've drilled it okay to the pillar drill hey guys and so now the side drilling stage we've got them all marked out with the center line mark with two diagonal lines it's all evenly spaced i may even have a template i'll produce and perhaps show jake that one later but it's all very carefully marked out 280 total height 190 total width and these are marked in from the side about 25 mil. And we're gonna cut it out with the force in a bit, goggles on, and off we go. Give it a breather, now and again. Straight through. Straight through like that. Oh, not quite through. There we go. 
and we put a sacrificial layer there and go all the way through and then we can chisel that very carefully or even use a square file. Brilliant! Back to the storage project. We've done our design, it's not great. I'm going to improve that Shed Hackers um, and I've made a template. I've transferred some of the ideas onto my side of the container, the storage unit. That's it drilled out. Jake's drilled out the um, the four slots ready for making into a square hole rather than just a uh, obviously a round hole. And here we have it. And we've had to chisel it very carefully. Okay, and you can see all of them have been very carefully chiselled. Use a mallet, and the mallet looks like this. And just pan back, Jake, please. And then um, you can see very carefully, and keep the lines on all of them. And you can use a piece of wood underneath the bench so you don't damage the bench. Most importantly, it's got to be vertical. You can see it's vertical. And the corners are nice and square. And go from both sides. Once you've done what, halfway through one side, try and go through from the other side as well. And uh, it'll help avoid this sort of breakout, it's called. But anyway, that's side one. Now, this will be done exactly the same. There's the G-clamp holding it down. You'll need one of those. It's better that to do that method than I think on a, a bench hook and it keeps the work safe and it keeps your working method much more accurate. Thank you. Hey guys, I've got these to fit in like that. You see, fits in like that. And there's two of them. That'll fit in there. Okay, nice and snugly. And then I'm going to cut them out a little bit like bats, don't they? Cricket bats. Line them up so they're exactly the same. I'm going to put some pilot holes in, I've put some in already. And then we can drill these out. With the force in a bit. There's our two sides, we've marked them out. Got a centre line, and the lines, the drill has gone through, so they're all the same. We can then put them in the old um, mini pillar drill. Guard on, goggles on, hair back. Okay, tap it off. Haven't gone right through. But with that sacrificial layer on there, I can very carefully go right through. And I've got the markings for the other one, so they'll both be the same. Well done. Hi, Shed Hackers. Um, now, this is the storage project, and um, there's the design we've been working on. Um, I know we're going to make that much better soon, and I'll redraw it for you. Um, oh, little um, key fob, we'll make loads of those. Um, they're the sort of four back parts that connect the various parts together. Jake's just panning around, so it'll look like this. With these parts in between. And there'll be four of them. Like that. Um, so there's two of those, symmetrical. Now before we move on, um, I just wanted to show you how we make these sort of back connections. It's 80 millimeters wide. Each hole is 40 millimeters in between from center to center. So from there to there, center to center, it's 40 millimeters. You can change that, of course. Change it for your design and whatever you want to hold. Um, the actual um, tenon, if you like, it could be seen as a mortise and tenon, this type of joint, is roughly 20 millimetres, okay, and it's 60 millimetres long. This is the bit we're going to cut off, and the same here. Cut this all off. Jake, if you just show me doing that, so that's all going to be cut off in four parts. So, in effect, what you'll have is a piece like this cut off, you'll have four of them. 
we'll use those maybe later and it will look something like that when it's cut off and then you can drill your holes if you want to depending on your design later and shed hackers alter your design if you can adapt it make it yours that's the skill in some of this work and it'd be lovely to see some of your photos uploaded to show me what you've done in your own shed okay so jake's showing turning those around to show the symmetrical arrangements it's all in pine wood deal look at the lovely grain in here and they look they're not there there used to be a branch coming out of there there's the pith the middle of the the knot okay lovely grain actually um, all sustainable timber growing very quickly i'll come back to you in a minute I should have us back to the project, storage project. I can see now we've got the four um, bat shaped um, pieces of timber in there and we've marked them all up so we know which way round they go back in and that's really important. Three, three and uh, another number like one and one and two and two and so forth. Just mark them all up so as you do them you know where they all go. Now you can see that mortise and tenon sort of joint there works really well but on some of them I notice they're quite stiff so I'm just going to get Jake to show um, you or show me rather how you can just trim them up now you could trim them up with the chisel very very carefully placing the chisel in there and you could take the smallest part off like that literally half a millimeter now for some of the younger viewers that's going to be quite tricky and um, I don't want you to cut your hand and you know this sort of technique is something you learn over a long period of time so what you can do you could use a square file perhaps just to get that corner straight there as well or you could use a flat file and you could just carefully file that so it's nice and level and enough can be taken off to ensure that the joint and make sure the joint fits perfectly. Now the better the joint, the better the product. Come back to you soon. One of this project, this is the finished product we're making. It's a sort of a, a storage um, device for small items. And we've designed it so there's no glued joints. It's all a mortise and tenon with pins and dowels holding it together. I personalized it with some laser cut work, which you can do if you have that opportunity. Um, and the sort of things you can put inside are completely up to you. It could be more boy related or girl related or both. Okay. We thought actually, because I asked my daughter what we could add to it. And she mentioned about putting perhaps some hooks on it to put um, some jewellery on it, which would look nice, I think. Or you could drill some holes and put a series of dowels in it so you can hang things off. You can see the size because that's a full size pencil. Um, and before we move on, let me just mention that like in all projects, if Jake comes over here, we have a project. That's the train project we've got online, you can have a look at. But we've got the design, the template, the full size template for this project. If you could just get a view on that one, Jake. That's a full size view of the side. And you can see how we found the, 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 the middle of each um, a mortise and tenon by drawing two diagonal lines. And this is the bat part, and there's four of those. Uh, two have got holes in and two at the bottom don't and you can design uh, an alteration on that or a modification in some way it's really up to you really that's the fun of these projects and then there is the actual um, design overall design and see side elevation the plan view Jake can you see that one the plan view and the um, end view the end view okay and that's an orthographic type of drawing and you can see all the sizes are in millimeters so it's 320 long it's 280 high it's 190 millimeters wide but you can change those um arrangements and those sizes it's really up to you okay so that's the, the sort of introduction to the project going back to the project going back to it of course you know you can put small perfumes in there and things like that um, and when you're sanding which we'll go back to I'll show you how to get a really good job because there's a few little bits we haven't varnished it yet that we could improve upon okay